Those who were there experienced a magical three days featuring a lineup of the biggest and brightest stars of that time in 1969. Freedom. There are a number of books out on Woodstock, one of them by music historian and New York disc jockey Pete Fornatel. It's called The Story of Woodstock, Back to the Garden. Welcome, Pete Fornatel. Great to see you again, Bill. Woodstock has been uh, dubbed three days of peace and love. Uh, <laughs> there was a lot of mud, too, wasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> it's all been romanticized, you know, even the mud. Even the mud has been romanticized. And I think part of the reason for that is that Woodstock has moved from the realm of reality to the realm of mythology. And as we look at things through rose-colored glasses, it's pretty easy to forget the inconveniences, which were many, the discomforts, which were many, and just concentrate on, on the stuff that we loved, the music, the camaraderie, the spirit of Woodstock, which I think, you know, 40 years later, still going strong. Back to the Garden, the title. Back to the Garden is a uh, reference to Joni Mitchell's lyric in her song about Woodstock. We got to get ourselves back to the garden. You know, she wasn't there. One of the points of the book is that you didn't have to be at Woodstock to be at Woodstock. Uh, we call our last chapter, The Whole World Goes to Woodstock, because that it's essentially what happened. If, if we could call upon a, a newsman who, uh, who was uh, on the scene at the time, uh, you'd know that the story went from being first a music story to a local news story, a regional news story, a national news story, and then an international news story. Well, it just so happens that uh, we brought one into the studio here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> his name is Mike Eisgrau. Mike was working for WNEW at the time. And uh, he was helicoptered in to Woodstock. This sight is hard to believe. We're up over the trees now, and we're coming in over the top of the main stage of this music festival. And for easily a half a mile, all we can see on this hilltop are people. Once you got on the ground, what was it like? Well, uh, <laughs> was it muddy when you got it? Uh, it, it, was, it was muddy, but the first kid I saw was uh, stark naked. How does it feel walking around in your birthday suit? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got high yet? Not yet. No. <laughs> Man, you really should. Walter Cronkite did a piece about... Woodstock, which the, wo I, the wonderful late Walter Cronkite. Yeah, yes. absolutely. I, I love his report because he says, 27 days after Tranquility Base, on an untranquil sea of mud, there was a walk in space that 400,000 long-haired pilgrims in and out of sweatshirts called the greatest weekend since the creation. It came to be known as the Woodstock Nation in search of rock, acid rock, acid, pot, Peace. Now you got to imagine Walter saying these things. It just <laughs> it, amazing. And then my favorite is when he lists the groups that played there. I just crack up hearing Sly and the Family Stone, Country Joe and the Fish, <laughs> Janis Joplin, the Jefferson Airplane. It's just fabulous. It's going to be David Crosby has said, uh, nobody killed anybody, nobody shot anybody. Pretty accurate, uh, Pete? Some people take the position that it was important because nobody killed one another. You know, again, there's that uh, perfect storm aspect to it. And to put it in the same terms 40 years later, uh, these are the reasons. I came, down, came up with three reasons why I think there's more attention being paid to the 40th than there was to the 25th or the 10th. Uh, the first word is curiosity. If you missed Woodstock by an accident of birth, not all young people, but many of them are still intensely fascinated by the event, by the music, and by the musicians. And with our modern media and that uh, Bethel Woods Museum, they can vicariously virtually recreate it for themselves. Do you think we'll have a, a, another big anniversary for the 50th? The average age of the people at Woodstock was between 15 and 30. That means the 15-year-olds are turning 55 this year, 
and the 30-year-olds are turning 70. They don't know if they're going to be around for the 50th. In your 60s and 70s, you're a bit more reflective and you want to hold on to the things that meant something to you. And I think Woodstock means that thing to many people all over the world. Again, Fornatel's book is Back to the Garden. For Perspective, I'm Bill Deal, ABC News.